All righty. Test one, two. I want to make a practice podcast, see if I can't talk to myself for, I don't know, 15 minutes. I've been thinking a lot about the polarization of masculine and feminine energy that religion does to young people and skipping out on exploring the opposite gender when you were younger, um, leading to a playful expression of that in your later life. And for me, I felt growing up in the Mormon religion, very, very judgmental of when I would see the expression of femininity and eccentricism in people that I myself was repressing. So when I would see, you know, like a piano player, like my sister would get so into playing piano, she'd be so emotional and, um, and I would make fun of her for it because it made me feel uncomfortable. It made me feel literally like uneasy. Uh, and I never understood why that happens. It happens when I would see people cry and be like touched, especially with something like music, because music was such a big part of my life as a musician that it made me feel uncomfortable when I saw people being touched by music. And it took me many years to realize that's because I did not feel comfortable myself expressing that side of me. Uh, and this leads to a lot of problems. Obviously, I become very judgmental. I become very um, stiff in my identity. I don't allow people their own experience. I um, Essentially, I lose out on half of my own inner reality. And, and yeah, I think that that's happening to a lot of people growing up in the in any religion, uh, I grew up Mormon, like I was saying, and it definitely happens. And you see that in the counterculture in Salt Lake of Mormons leaving and then exploring, right? Exploring something that they never, never had the opportunity to explore at a younger age. Like they often, I think, will express it as like, I'm catching up for everything I missed out on. Um, and that also looks like drinking, um, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, doing drugs. Uh, and I'm totally cool with that. But it's the polarization to the opposite that is troublesome where people become, it's still this all or nothing mentality that the evil and good or the right and wrong um, mentality of religions. I should just speak from my own experience from specifically the LDS religion, um, it manifests in that polarity after you've left the church. So there's um, an overindulgence in the things you were, weren't were allowed when you were younger. And so you see a lot of alcoholism in the counterculture to Mormonism, which I also have a lot of interesting thoughts about because of um, the need for as I've learned the solution to alcoholism, which is a spiritual life, a life ordered by a ultimate value that religion provides, but it doesn't work for everybody. But that ultimate value um, of logos or order or whatever you want to call it is, um, is, needed to get out of alcoholism which is so interesting if you think back to early mormonism when it was spreading like wildfire there was a need for that in these people's lives and i think this is my own hypothesis that there was a lot of um people struggling with purposelessness and would turn to alcohol and drug abuse um and were freed from that when they joined the Mormon church and became, you know, sober, if you will, and used the religion structure to maintain that sobriety. Um, and so you have these generations of, of dry alcoholics 
reproducing and, and creating um, a gene pool of alcoholics that have never tried alcohol. And so when they leave the church, they um, overindulge, cross a line, and the genetic um, imprint of that alcoholism uh, fires up and is, is expressed as, you know, intense alcoholism. And little do people know that the solution to that is not maybe going back to their, their religion, but finding a higher order, a um, higher purpose and meaning. Um, and I, the 12 steps do this really, really well for people. They, it, creates, um, it creates a new king of the hierarchy, a new um, ultimate uh, value of being service to other people, specifically other alcoholics. And that purpose that is given to a um, an alcoholic who has done the 12 steps saves them from even the desire to drink because the drink was to solve a problem that now now is solved by this higher value. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that, I think, but it's like a, a way of putting it in simple terms. This, um, well, going back to the idea that there's this gene pool of alcoholism in Salt Lake City because a lot of Mormons were here and are here uh, leads to the counterculture of alcoholism, essentially. And um, that's super fascinating to me because um, in the, well, it's fascinating for lots of different reasons, but, um, but in that counterculture, you also get the expression of the opposites that weren't allowed to be explored in younger years because of the gender roles that are assigned within the Mormon church that um, take away from the opportunity to explore what it would be like to be um, the opposite gender or even um, like of opposite moral uh, perspectives. And so then you run into the same problem essentially is that there is still the polarization of the opposite of what they grew up as. And I experienced this for 10 years, right? Like I left when I was 18 and I um, immediately found drugs and alcohol and absolutely loved it. In fact, it worked better than anything had ever worked in my life up to that point. I was miserable up until I found this higher purpose. Um, so for me, getting sober left me happier than I ever remember being, even as a small child. In fact, it might be that, you know, we are, as humans need higher value, higher purpose and meaning in order to have our faculties, uh, faculties, functions, like in order for us to work properly, um, having a higher purpose which i think is why nihilism is so dangerous because it leaves not a lack of moral compass but a lack of reason for having a moral compass um and it leaves a um well it leaves a lot of things but so this idea of polarization is countered by uh, an idea of um bringing both of those together, bringing the opposites together into paradox in a sense, but I've been working towards bringing in my feminine in a, in a way that is incorporated into my masculine. Um, and that looks like me expressing myself more femininely in clothing and in earrings, and also in my expression of music and being more um, vulnerable and less stoic, not... I also, side note, I love stoicism, but I'm using the word stoic in the modern definition of it, which is more of like a lack of feeling, right? Real stoicism, the actual philosophers who were stoic were not running from feelings. They were feeling an appropriate amount. And I, I think that there's a difference between running from feelings or repressing feelings and feeling and transmuting through like the alchemical process of attention of the feeling. So like if I'm feeling uncomfortable sitting in that uncomfortable and allowing it to 
express its needs and desires to me as the awareness um, so that I, it can move into what I picture as like a blossoming flower. Um, and there's all of these different, like in a moment of anxiety or a moment of discomfort, there is so much complexity that the easiest thing to do is repress it. But in reality, the, the thing to do is to feel that and start to break it down into its miniature or its um, its parts at the at the bottom. Like, what, what am I trying to say? The very building blocks of that moment of anxiety or um, anxiousness, uncomfortableness, um, and taking those little parts and being able to start to understand um, what it is that you're actually feeling. An example of this, I guess, would be I'd never wanted to perform in front of people because of the intense anxiety it gave me. But then if I can sit with that, like in this moment, I'm feeling anxious. I can sit in that feeling and realize that there's a big chunk of it that's actually excitement and bringing me life and joy. And it flushes my face out and makes my heart beat. And there's this lifefulness to it that I actually do really like. And it's tied to a lot of the future projections of failure and rejection but those are um, two different things that are clumped together under the experience of anxiety um it can be really difficult to get into the habit of feeling your feelings and i'm speaking from my own experience of not being able to do that very well and still continuing to learn how to do that better um Anyway, this is how my brain works, by the way, I, I'll hit so many different points. And then I um, am so far away from the original thing, but I never had a goal in mind in the first place. So hopefully it's somewhat entertaining or insightful in some way, um, which is an interesting concept. Why am I talking to the computer? Why am I hoping that people see this and get something out of it? I think there is um, a joy of, for me, of breaking this stuff down and understanding it um that i hope you also feel that joy i think i get um sometimes misinterpreted as me trying to solve your problems um and that can be intrusive i think a lot of my energy can seem intrusive to people um and like picking them apart tearing them apart and i think there's an aspect of that but I think the majority of what brings me excitement and passion is an exploration of idea and of hypothesis and theory, even when they're not possible to rationally and scientifically um, prove. I just find the exploration part to be fascinating and exciting and fun. Um, you can notice that I forget to breathe when I'm in this state, though. Um, that's something that I want to work on. Um, so I want to start a podcast. I want to start bringing people on. And I'm going to start with friends, close friends of mine, and hopefully go many directions with it. But I want to focus on the, I guess, the totality of what individuation or becoming whole, the, the, the whole process of that and all the miniature parts of that. And one of my favorite things about incorporating my opposites is dream work. Dream work is an interesting way to connect to the feminine creative um, birthplace of symbolism thoughts ideas art um which is the unconscious mind or i've been thinking of it slightly differently lately where it's like it's the universe someone commented on one of my posts recently saying that similarly to how i am a pinpoint of, of perspective and awareness in the infinite universe so I'm the universe experiencing itself as a pinpoint of awareness, referencing other pinpoints of awareness in time that then I build an identity based off of all of these pins in time that I are, that are my memories. 
um someone brought up this idea of like the star being that pin of awareness in time space and then the um then the universe like the physical universe being the you know the opposite of that uh, the the all or the uh what i would call like the unconscious or the non-rational the um the actual soup of creation or um the everything that order is brought out of and i really like this idea of the star and the and the space as being a what's the word allegory or <clears throat> something like that <clears throat> excuse me where was i going well so there's obviously two different things there's the rational mind and then the non-rational mind or the star in space and or the masculine and the feminine and we work our lives from zero to 20 25 um building the star the single point of identity and we build it on top of the the space or the feminine or the unconscious mind and so 25 30 rolls around and we are firm in our ego and our understanding of ourselves and our identity as these referencing pinpoints of time of memory in time and time space and then we start working towards reincorporating the all into us and becoming a psyche of paradox essentially of of yes and no of masculine and feminine of opposites um and i think that that progression towards higher consciousness is a progression towards understanding that both yes and no understanding that there is within the infinite all all possibilities and so we have paradox and the finite pinpoint of awareness is not that it's not paradoxical it is dualistic but then the the feminine or the opposite of that the polarity of that is infinite and paradoxical right and we slowly incorporate that till we die and return to allness or nothingness it's a paradox right um and so my podcast i want to talk a lot about how we go about doing that both naturally even if you're not paying attention to it it happens or by bringing awareness to it you can speed up the process which i i absolutely love that idea because that's what the alchemists were doing the psychological alchemists um the original alchemists i think were doing both like chemical alchemy and psychological alchemy um but i find it fascinating with carl jung studying alchemy and then post jungians and um there's this speeding up of the process of individuation which is alchemy and you could think of also like the feeling of that discomfort and then breaking it distilling it down into its finest parts um and then using the powder of that distilled process to um to ignite or fuel your life your libido if you will like psychic energy um it's like a turning a well it's like processing what is it coal into a uh, uh energy and something like that i don't know i'm not very up on how the, that process even works so i don't know what i'm talking about but but anyway i'm really excited about this podcast i'm really excited to have people to talk to and bounce off of because this is fun but i get all over the place and there seems to be maybe no um order here i'm very feminine if you will in my exploration um and i do want to make a note that when i describe feminine and masculine it's very there's like 
concrete examples of that and then very all the way up to very abstract examples of that um, and I tend to dip all around and so I can be kind of confusing when I'm referencing specific energies like that um, because on like a grand scheme of thing it is um, very abstract to think of masculine and feminine as the order and the uh, or not even order but the the pin point of consciousness or of awareness and then the totality of awareness that is the universe uh experiencing itself through the pinpoints um which is kind of like this folding in on itself of um probably what like a fourth dimensional object would look like i i assume is this folding in of um of the paradox of the all and the in, the infinite and the finite um anyway uh i could keep talking and i'm wondering if that's what i should do or if i should leave this how it is and then get my first um guest on here to start diving into questions such as you know what have dreams meant in your life what's the earliest dream that you can remember does it influence your identity now I, i'm curious about this because my original or my first memory I don't know the difference between reality and dream at this point. I'm so young and it influenced my, what I believe to be a part of my, the archetype or like the pattern of human behavior that is expressing through me as in it was almost a symbol or a snapshot of what was to come. My earliest memory was, and I'm curious to ask people more about this and to see if their dreams as younger people have shaped who they become or even, you know, pulled them in that direction, like a guiding aspect of the psyche. Um, Cause that's my experience now as I use my dreams as a guide. Um, I think a lot of people talk about dream guides and stuff like this, but like the dream in of its function is a guiding function or a processing function. And I find it fascinating it's very fun to start working with your dreams. I also want to talk about synchronicity, the ideas behind synchronicity. I'm always reading and I'm always trying to learn more. And one of the books I'm reading or trying to read, it's actually way difficult um, to comprehend, but is Jung's theory on synchronicity, because I think it's fascinating, but it pulls us out of this cause and effect. Um, perspective of reality that we've learned and puts us into a whole different framework of understanding reality and that can be very difficult for i think my my perspective that i've built on my whole life um anyway i'm rambling and i think i will leave this here if you guys see this if any of you see this uh comment and and like it so that i know that there's people interested in this stuff so that i have more energy to bring it to you because i think um it's really helpful for me to get even if it's it, it can be difficult i want feedback like i want to be i want to know that it, it, it's reaching somewhere right but that also gets uh messy for me because i will tend to outsource my values or like, I will be like, well, if people like this, I'll start doing that, but it might go against my innermost being. And so I can get taken away onto, into a false um, representation of myself. And so it's a double-edged sword. I want the feedback and I have to personally be careful with the feedback and continue to do what I wanna do and what comes to me in a meaningful way um, rather than making something that people like. I don't know if I'm making any sense. It's really helpful for me to have other people so that when I'm talking, it's like sonar. My brother once told me this and I really liked it, but it's like, I'm like sending out waves. And if there's nothing there to reflect it back, I, I get lost. Like, I don't know where I'm at. And so if I have an object or a human to 
not even an object as in a human, I'm able to be redirected um, a small portion of what I'm spilling out and relocate where I am. And that's really, really helpful for me. So this will be definitely something I think that will be easier for me to do with another human. And with that, I'm going to end and I hope I see y'all back here someday. Bye.